Our life is a combination of many, many problems, and the difficulties you encounter definitely grow as you strive for higher objectives. Sadly, only by overcoming them can you survive. The same goes for businesses in any industry. Even SpaceX, the famous rocket company of the richest billionaire in the world, faces big problems with its new engine that's unlike any other. So what are the problems with the Raptor engine and how is SpaceX solving those problems? What's the biggest difference with the other? Let's find out everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. At this point, I think designing a rocket is trivial. Just trivial. There's like tons of books that'll, you read them, you know, you can understand equations, you can design a rocket. But the designing of it is not hard. The making of it, is, of even one, is hard. The making of a production line that builds and launches many is extremely hard. Mm. Um, and then the, the next level beyond that would be um, uh, a, creating a fully reusable system and having that be in volume production and volume launch. That's, the, that's super, super hard. Well, this seems to be the biggest issue. Musk emphasized many times that developing a production system is 10 to 100 times harder than designing the product, which proved especially true with Raptor. For initial test flights, SpaceX would use 33 Raptor engines to power the super heavy first stage and six on the Starship upper stages. So for each test flight that either ends in the ocean with a fiery landing or with a vehicle that can't be reused, the company would lose 39 Raptor engines. That's a staggering amount of engines, both in terms of cost and lost production time. By comparison, NASA provided Aerojet Rocketdyne with a billion dollars a few years ago to restart the production of Space Shuttle main engines. Four of these will power each Space Launch System rocket. Each individual engine, on top of the startup fee NASA paid, would cost an additional $100 million. For all this money, NASA will get a maximum production of four engines a year, engines that are not reusable and largely based on technologies decades old. Remember last year, Elon Musk warned SpaceX could face a genuine risk of bankruptcy from Starship engine production? He wrote it in an email. Unfortunately, the Raptor production crisis is much worse than it seemed a few weeks ago. As we've dug into the issues following the exiting of prior senior management, they have unfortunately turned out to be far more severe than was reported. There's no way to sugarcoat this. The senior management mentioned here is likely referring to Will Heltzley, the former SpaceX senior VP of propulsion. As CNBC reported, he left Raptor production due to a lack of progress. Heltzley's departure demonstrates the intense pressure on the engine's development, given the key role it plays in Starship's success. In addition, former SpaceX Vice President of Mission and Launch Operations Lee Rosen and Senior Director of Mission and Launch Operations Rick Lim have left the company as well. Raptor engine production is now led by Jacob McKenzie, who's been with the company for over six years. Another problem is that SpaceX built the Raptor with unprecedented power. R Raptor 2, uh, a standard operating pressure is 300 bar, which is kind of, this is crazy for a rocket engine. I no finally, one's ever done 300 bar. No, especially not sustained. I'm sure they did it, on, <laughs> maybe blew one up and trying to get there or something. Oh, we but, blew, we blew a, a lot of engines up. Yeah. Uh, I've lost count of how many, I, I think we might have blown up 30 engines, or, uh, that's a lot. Raptor 2 engines produce an immense amount of energy. This will probably kill itself right on the ground. Quite ridiculous, isn't it? Well, let's explain. In fact, once the propellant inside the engine has combusted, it turns into a gas and creates an enormous amount of pressure in the chamber. But one of the most important parts of the engine is the nozzle. This is the final stage of the engine and its job is to take all that pressure and direct it out the back to maximize thrust. In order to use that pressure most efficiently, the nozzle is designed so that pressure of the gas matches the surrounding air pressure as it leaves the nozzle. If the pressure is higher than the ambient pressure at this point, it will spill over the edges, reducing the thrust. This doesn't cause harm to the engine, but does reduce efficiency. But as rockets climb through the atmosphere, the air pressure drops. That means that no matter how the nozzle shape, the engine will lose efficiency as it gets higher. However, since Starship's second stage doesn't get used until it's already out of the thickest part of the atmosphere, its main engines can be specifically designed for the vacuum of space. In order to work efficiently in space, the Raptor vacuum engine has a much larger engine nozzle. This is because in space, the exhaust plume expands much more, 
since there's no atmosphere pushing against it. But the problem comes when it's time to test this kind of engine down on the ground. Although it's fine for the exit pressure to be greater than the ambient pressure, if the exit pressure is much lower, the effects could be catastrophic. When this happens, the air starts to push its way into the engine bell, separating the exhaust flow from the walls of the nozzle. If the pressure difference is too much, the engine nozzle could vibrate so intensely that it rips itself apart. This was a problem they had to avoid when designing the space shuttle since its engines had to operate from the ground all the way into space. More seriously, the Raptor's power even threatened the very existence of the launch pad as it took off. As we explained in other episodes, this is the reason why SpaceX can't fly this year. In short, SpaceX is clearly facing unprecedented problems because it's doing unusual things. However, the rocket industry is not easy for all. The only difference is that the difficulties are never the same. Even the old RS-25 engine had its problems. In August, a plumbing issue on a rocket engine forced a postponement in the first launch of NASA's most powerful rocket on a history-making round-the-moon flight. During the countdown, engineers detected a problem with one of the core stage's four RS-25 rocket engines. The rocket's designed to bleed off some of its super-cool propellant to condition the engines. But basically, it maintains the engines at the proper temp for startup. But the hydrogen bleed procedure wasn't working properly for engine number three. Engineers tried various techniques to free up the plumbing snag, and NASA called an unplanned hold at T-minus 40 minutes to give them more time to come up with a fix. But in the end, mission managers decided to scrub the launch for that day. Blue Origin's BE-4 is another good example of a rocket engine problem. One of the most persistent problems is that BE-4 engine testing and development programs have been relatively hardware poor in recent years. Effectively, this means that the factory in Washington has not had enough components to build development engines, and that's led to extended periods during which no testing has occurred on the stands in Texas. It was surprising to hear this because back in the spring of 2017, Blue Origin stated publicly that its development program was hardware rich. After arriving as CEO in late 2017, however, Bob Smith appears to have focused more on substantial reorganization of Blue Origin's leadership rather than hardware development. Other problems were prioritized too, so the BE-4 team didn't get all the resources and freedom it needed to proceed at full throttle. After all, NASA SLS successfully lifted off and Jeff's company delivered enough BE-4s to ULA. Now we believe that SpaceX can control all these engine problems. Well, that's all for today's video. Let us know in the comments below what you think, and if you enjoyed today's video, leave us with a like, consider subscribing, and that way you'll see more content just like this. Thanks and we'll see you tomorrow.